Hi guys, I'm here with vlog 113 and this one I have called The Killer 22nd Century and Westies. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still on that topic I'm afraid. It's such a big thing for me that I do need to kind of keep talking about it. So I'm going to jump straight in. Um, and remember, um, if you've missed previous vlogs, you can always go back and watch them. Um, each vlog, like I said, you know, it is a particular subject, but it will make a lot better sense if you go and watch it back. Um, so, yeah, let's see how we go. By the way, excuse my crazy hair day, but it's 30 degrees today and my hair literally has a mind of its own. So, um, there's, there's, I'm trying to... I'm trying to um, keep it out of my face, but it's a little bit crazy today. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd said last time I vlogged, didn't I, as well, that, um, so a few weeks ago, it was my 29th birthday, and uh, it was really, really, really miserable. And it didn't help, you know when you get little comments on your birthday that um, just make everything feel ten times worse? So I know she didn't mean it, but my auntie, she put this comment in saying, enjoy the last of your 20s. And I was just like, yeah. well, it feels like I definitely was in such a bad mood because all I could focus on was all the years from 20 up to 29 that for me have just been completely wasted. Like, I just feel like I haven't made any process, um, progress with anything, really. Um, until now in terms of my health because now I'm on the herbal plan and things feel like they're finally stepping forward but I I don't like I'm a, I'm a big hater of wasting time um, so it makes me not much makes me as mad as thinking about time that I've wasted um, so yeah that, um, that did wind me up um, so at the moment um, we're we are, there's lots of worries in our household at the moment and money is a big part of it, especially for me with my current medicine costs, which I knew would be a problem from the start when I went down the herbal route, but you know, it was no option for me, I had to do it anyway. And um, my mum, bless her, you know, because I obviously live with my partner and my mum, all three of us struggle, we all help each other out as much as we can do. My mum actually made a comment the other day and we had to sit down and have a serious conversation for the first time in a long time. Um, she said that she felt like she was cramping our style, me and my partners, that she often felt like we should have our own space and she shouldn't be living with us. And um, we just set her straight and said we want her to live with us. Um, we're not traditional in really any of the sense of the word. We're quite European, because if you are on mainland Europe, you know that in mainland Europe, families can live together for their whole lives. So you don't really move out, or you might move out, but then you, when your parent needs care or whatnot, they live with you. That's how it is in mainland Europe. And I think that's personally a lot healthier than how it is in England, where it's like, you're 18, get lost, like, get your own place. Um, you know, family is family, as far as I'm concerned. So I don't believe in this nonsense about you shouldn't be living with your parent at the age of whatnot, because I think if you're all chipping in and you're all living there, then what the hell's the problem? Um, yeah, so it's not been an easy time for all three of us. I think I have been quite stuck in my bubble, um, because I obviously have been trying to deal with some quite nasty symptoms, getting used to this herbal medicine, getting off my Westy medicine, um, not easy times. Um, I'm also feeling quite blue at the moment, I suppose since I've, my, since my birthday I've been feeling quite blue um, in terms of kind of creativity. I feel like I'm really kind of stuck and grounded. Um, I feel like I'm pushing all the time, like for acting that I'm applying to stuff, but I'm just not getting anything. Um, I did actually feel, and I try not to feel resentment and jealousy because it's not nice traits, they're not tra traits that are um, nice. But I did kind of get irritated last week because my acting agency, they post um, constantly on social media when they have managed to get an actor a role or whatnot. And there were a few actors on their agency where I'm represented as well. And they were saying, oh, they've got roles. Um, and I was feeling really bitter and annoyed about it because I went and looked on their profiles and I was like, you haven't even got a proper show reel, your acting headshots are poor my profile is 60 billion times stronger why am i not being offered the roles that i'm applying for and that sounds bitter but you know i think it's important that we explore kind of all kind of human traits and emotions in my blogs 
and that it's actually okay to have feelings like that because we're all normal and we all have feelings like that and you know it, it's just frustrating when you know that you're doing everything that you can and you see other people around you getting there faster who haven't worked as hard on certain things as you that's really hard that's really hard to take you really do have to swallow hard and be like okay okay my time will come my time will come that's what you have to keep telling yourself but on some days so like on my birthday i just had enough and i was just like seriously <laughs> when am i going to get a break do i seriously actually have a curse in the family where i uh, just automatically don't get a luck i don't know we have to jury's out on that one at the moment um but yeah so it's it's not been a great few months um and at least the herbal medicine is kind of giving me a certain level of positivity and hope because obviously symptoms are improving for me and i'm working towards it and yeah you know one one baby step in front of another i think for now and hopefully in terms of kind of career and whatnot something will come up soon and i just have to keep chipping away at it and keep applying and that's all i can that's all anyone can do really um yeah you know we have to just wait and see on that one um and i think uh my partner made this comment the other day and it was funny so i thought i would share it with you he said he said it's like going on to herbal medicine for me is like transforming into a vampire <laughs> and i think that that's absolutely spot on because it, it has been like that for me because when you're going on to herbs after years and years of being a westy patient by the way, if you're not sure why I'm referring to Western medicine doctors as Westies, you need to go back and watch my previous vlog because I'll be continuing to use this term quite a lot. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, after years and years of being a Westie lab rat, effectively, um, and being pumped in with all sorts of medicines and things, I never really understood what they were, I didn't really need them, blah, 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 blah. Um, obviously now changing back to a much more naturalistic, old-fashioned approach is quite a shock to my body. It's a shock to my system. Um, and it's going to take time for my body to get used to it. Um, so it does feel like, you know, um, you've been bitten and you feel really shit and cruddy for the first few weeks. But I'm hoping that a few months down the line I kind of just like brighten up like a brand new vampire and feel like really great. Um, so, yeah, um, it's not what I thought it would be. But I suppose everything is a learning curve in life. So we just keep rolling with that and see how it goes um because basically you know the westy medicine has screwed me up even more and now the herbal medicine what it's trying to do is piece me back together it's trying to clear up the, the shit storm basically uh repair the damage um but you know it still remains to be seen how much it can repair how long it takes to do that um and unfortunately it will involve money because all the herbal supplements and whatnot that i have to get from the pharmacy it's expensive um, and then if you're on a high dose each day, you use it up really quickly. So it's like every other week that I'm having to order medicine. Um, you know, I haven't bought a new piece of clothing now for a year and a half, other than socks and knickers. I literally haven't. Um, or any makeup items, or really like anything to do with that. Um, because everything is going on my house. Um, but unfortunately that's life. And if you're in my position and you've got to do that, you've got to do that. There's There's nothing else to be done. We've got to... You help has to come priority above anything else. Um, so, you know, I would love to be able to afford to go on a holiday with my mum and my partner, but we can't at the moment. Next year will be my 30th, and we're desperately hoping that I can actually get away with them somewhere new for a proper holiday, because I've not had a proper holiday in about three years now. Um, but whether we can afford that, don't know. Unlikely. But, <laughs> you know, I live in hope, so let's see. Maybe by then I might have had an acting role and actually had, um, you know be known by some people let's see um and it, yeah some like the herbal medicine feels like kind of waking up my system and it's just kind of as i said in the last blog it's kind of shocking how we put our trust in normal doctors and we don't know know a lot about the medicine that we're being given um and actually a lot of normal basic medicines can be causing problems that you don't even know about so i just you know i keep calling for reform in our healthcare system about that because I think there needs to be a lot more attention to it um, and the fact that there are other options and they need to be recognised I don't think it's fair that they're not recognised or legitimised by the Westies really um, so for example you know I've, I've talked about it before but like in France and Portugal they have what I call a health MOT I think it's every two years it might be once a year 
um, where every person is entitled to can be called in to see their doctor, get some blood tests done, you know, if they're worried, an examination, whatnot, just like a basic, that's why I call it an MOT. It wouldn't catch everything, but it will definitely catch some illnesses in some people. We don't have anything like that in England. Our healthcare system is appalling when it comes to, you know, what we're actually offered. And people are like, oh, we've got cervical smear tests and this and that. Rubbish, trust me. Compare it to other countries, especially Germany. See how many more diseases and illnesses they screen for and then come back to me. Um, you know, even my partner, he's Portuguese. He always says, oh, if I'm ill, I'm going back to Portugal because the system here, I hate it in England. Um, you know, you can go there and... You know, if you're worried about something, they actually do something about it. Whereas here in England, you know, they're, uh, you know, unless you look like you're dying or something really bad shows up, they'll keep putting you off and putting you off. And I know people say it's to do with funding and whatnot, but trust me when I tell you, it has been like that for years and years and years, way before COVID hit. So um, I think it's actually, uh, obviously the funding is a major problem, but putting that aside, it is down to actually the way our system works, which is a fail. It doesn't work. It needs to reform. Um, you know, like I said, we've forgotten our roots, and it's dangerous to do that. Um, and like I said, you know, I do really do feel like in the last few months that I've had my eyes wide open. It's very clear to me that even, even the simplest Western or Westies medicines like antiacids, you know, if they're taken for years, they always have consequences. Even if, you know, um, you might be sitting here right now watching this and being like, well, Safra, I'm not sure that's true. I've been on this medicine for years and I don't feel anything. But I bet that you probably do have some symptoms that are related that you're just not aware of that that's what's causing it. And you are naively trusting your doctor when they say that it is safe to take. And of course, we all should be able to trust doctors fully, but you can't always do that. Um, and, you know, there are, most of the time there are always consequences. Um, and those consequences can be really hard to reverse, um, which I'm finding out the tough way now because trying to wean myself off the Westie medicine is proving really painful and really hard. Um, and frankly, I don't feel like I'll ever have faith in them again for much at all because um, I just feel like I've been to, been lied to and been um, mistreated for many years. So that's just where my stance is on it, you know doesn't mean that I don't think we have a brilliant system because we do a lot of countries don't have anything like it but I feel like there are so many aspects of it that are just falling apart that don't work that need changing and improvements certainly when it comes to other alternative options and therapies and herbs they need to recognize that they exist and that they work and that referrals should be able to be made on the healthcare system for people like me um right okay so yeah, so I just, that's kind of the section about Westies. Um, but then I did also say that I was going to quickly talk about, um, so what I said, the killer 22nd century, which is what I've called it, which is basically some of what I've been talking about for the last few blogs, uh, which is that I feel like, and I think there's plenty of research out there to show this, that our modern medicines, so I'm not talking about herbal stuff, I'm talking about our Westies, our Western medicine, medical healthcare system, and our diets, so what we eat from the supermarkets, those two things alone, and also a severe lack of exercise for most people, um, is basically killing us slowly. That's why I've called it killer 20, 22nd century. Um, I feel like, you know, and I've talked about this before, but I feel like this is something that is good to keep bringing up, which is that our bodies have not upgraded since we were hunter-gatherers years and years and years and years and years ago. You know, our bodies haven't really changed. They've not caught up with our modern Western diets. The fact that we can get whatever we like whenever we want it, we can eat different foods every other day, different cuisines. Um, you know, it's great for our brain and, you know, stimulation and whatnot, but it's not good for our bodies. This is what a lot of people don't understand. Our bodies still fundamentally crave the basic formation diet that we had years and years and years ago. That's why when people go on diets, we talk about herbal, you often hear about very strict diets and kind of portions with vegetables and, and seeds and pulses um, and a little bit of meat, a lot of egg, um, not really any sweet treats, not a lot of other stuff. That's because that's what our body actually needs. That's just the truth. You can play it any other way that you like. But actually, we would all be quite healthy if we stuck to quite a strict diet um, in that respect. Um, and, you know, it, it is funny as well, the fact that 
our, you know, research has shown that our brains have actually shrunk in size since we were hunter-gatherers. Um, you know, we had to use our brains a lot harder than that back then to get our basic needs and whatnot. And it was a completely, compli completely different world, I know. But, you know, just going kind of back to the diets, I do think that we have completely lost our way with that in terms of what's actually good for us. And then people kind of wonder why it is that so many people are getting dietary problems and intolerances and whatnot. It's because there is too much variety. And also, and this is a massive thing, it's because of the amount of additives and things that are in our food from the supermarkets. Um, you know, there's, there's so much flour, for example, um, which is like made mainstream. It has so many additives and it's just so bad for you now um, that it's, you know, it's funny because when you go on like a gluten and dairy free diet and you have to keep checking the back of the packs, you're suddenly aware of just how much stuff actually contains things that you actually really shouldn't be eating. Um, so, yeah, um, that's kind of another one. Um, and also, um, I, someone said to me, oh, can you cover, said you were doing yoga. Um, yeah, so I've been doing yoga. I think in our modern world as well, we struggle to relax. Now, I'm not someone that relaxes easily at all. And in my defence, um, I have had quite a traumatic life with lots of nasty experiences that have kind of set off for me almost like a permanent state of, reaction and stress like fight or flight which i'm obviously now trying to break break free of now but i think that in our very busy fast-paced life that a lot of us have those issues now and things like to so like yoga you know that's something that i'm doing now out of everything that i've been doing the herbs the reflexology i'm not getting on very well with the yoga um i know that it really clicks with some people it doesn't particularly click with me because like i said before i hate wasting time and for me when i'm doing yoga i'm lying there thinking all I'm feeling is a little bit sleepy and I'm just wasting time. Um, so I'm not I'm not getting on with it terribly well. Um, but what I have learned, I've got a new respect for that, geez, is that controlling your breathing is really hard, really hard. Don't diss it until you've done it. Um, so if you've done like panel, um, prag I can't say it, pragnal and breathing, um, which is like you have to hold your breath for certain counts, um, and sometimes it's like 20 seconds, it's really long, then you have to breathe out really slowly, then you have to hold on empty for like 20 counts, it's really good for you to train your lungs and stuff to do that, but boy it's hard, I wasn't expecting it to be that hard, so definitely shout out to all those people that do that really well, because it is a discipline, I think that's what a lot of people don't realise, they think oh yoga is like all children relaxing but actually there's a lot of thought that goes into it and a lot of even though it looks really simple you're actually doing a lot to you know breathe hold do that and all of that um but yeah i'm doing exactly what i'm told i'm being a good girl um i'm sticking with my herbs um and yeah just hoping for the best and you know if i hadn't have had the response i had early on with not being sick probably right now i'd be feeling quite lost hope in all the herbs and i would be wondering oh spending a lot should i come off it because not much has improved but the fact that i stopped being sick quite soon after teacher one which i started a good few months ago to me is enough of a sign in my heart and to my medical instincts that i need to stick with it um and definitely the reflexology i'm really enjoying that so um that and that's good because that's kind of also got the re relaxation mixed in with it for um or you know because I need to switch off that's really important because i have a very high histamine level which means that you know i'm feeling tired and inflamed all of the time fight or flight is coming on when it shouldn't be so i need to just dampen down everything as much as possible um and yeah so you know that was i have talked about it in more detail about um our killer 22nd century um and you'll know all the topics that i've talked about and covered before but i just think it's very beneficial for all of us as individuals sometimes to just sit down and just focus and actually think actually am i exhausted what could i do better what could i do to help myself should i be altering my diet should i be trying to do yoga or something that's going to help with relaxation um have i been on a medication for years that i actually think might be causing me problems now um there's just, I, I think that's a problem. Our lives are so fast paced that sometimes we haven't got time to stop and think, 
actually for myself I need to do this or I need to do that. I know for example my mum taker is a perfect example. She puts things off and off. Her health always comes to the bottom of the pile. That's probably the case for most mums and also for women because we're always putting everyone else in front of us. Um, but I said to her the other day, I said enough. You, you know, especially your, to your age now, you need to start focusing on your health and your relaxation, um, not just everybody else's. And I feel like maybe if we were taught better when we were younger at school about um, not just... Do you remember the silly stuff at school? They were like, oh, for a balanced diet, eat an apple a day and nonsense like that. But I actually feel like maybe when we're a bit older, maybe more like a sixth firm age, when we've got a bit more development in our brain, we actually care and concentrate. Um, it might be worth doing some kind of like um, course at school or a sixth form that actually just teaches you the importance of certain aspects, you know, the exercise, the relaxation, the, the eating. Um, yeah, I just feel like we need to find a way to show people and our communities how to respect our bodies more. And I also feel like it would be really great in talking more about alternative options for helping those sorts of things, so like herbal medicine and whatnot. It's still such a kind of a, um, a curiosity, I think is the word I'm looking for. It's still not talked about enough or known about enough about alternative options. You know, when I've talked to friends and I've said, oh yeah, I see a herbal doctor, they're like, ooh, what's that? They do like potions and fire things up in like bottles and stuff. And it's like, well, no. <laughs> um, you know, it's what it is, is it's medicine, but it's back to the basic roots. It's our core stuff. It's where we've come from. I know, I don't want to sound really like hippie and whatnot, but I do feel like I need to say this, which is that we come from the earth, we die of the earth, and we become part of the earth again. And I really feel like a lot of people have forgotten that, definitely with our Western medicines, we are abandoning the basic core ingredients and the roots that are in the earth. And for me, that's why I'm feeling more hopeful and more invigorated on herbs than I ever was on Western medicine because it's all unnatural to me. Um, actually, it's unnatural to anyone because although, it's like I said before, it's made with core ingredients from plants and herbs, it's a weakened form and then they add loads of other stuff to it in the labs. So it's actually nowhere near as strong or as good for you as a natural herb or tea or tincture. Um, it would be, wouldn't it be amazing in, in like years to come if across England and everywhere you could find like herbalists dotted all over? Um, I mean, there are plenty of herbalists if you take the time to look them up, but it's expensive and it's hard to find one who's actually really skilled and, and really gets it. Um, and that's frustrating. That's really frustrating because I think it would help so many people. Um, so, yeah, definitely a, a lot to, um, to kind of take in and deal with all of that. Uh, but uh, so on my birthday, I was telling you I had a really shit miserable birthday. The only thing that made me smile the whole day was I had a donation in the post from a guy that I know for my hedgehog rescue, and um, on the on the address label it said um, his, I, he obviously hadn't remembered the full address and he'd put Safra Hog Girl, <laughs> and the postman got it right, got it to the right place. But I did think that was quite funny. It did make me smile. Um, so it's little things like that sometimes that you kind of have to go with. And I met, I know, I'll probably talk about it again soon because it's been kind of irritating me again. Um, you know the issue that I have with kids and pregnancy and marriage and all of that stuff, which always for some reason seems to be stuck in my head. I might even need to see a therapist about it because it's quite weird why I get so freaked out about it. But what I've always found amusing is that young girls, they always seem to gravitate towards me as like a, like as if I'm a big sister, I make a really good big sister role um, and whenever I meet young girls they always think that I'm quite cool um, so I met um, uh, who, where was it? I was with a client or a friend the other day and their daughter she came up to me and she just said to me you have beautiful hair, it's like a princess and I said thank you, I've, I've always had long hair um, and she was just so excitable um, and and it made me kind of, I know I'm going off piece a little bit here, it's not really on topic, but I always say my blogs are just free flowing, what's in my head to talk to you about. It did make me feel, you know, when it comes to kids and having kids, I don't feel much of a connection with babies. Um, but when they start talking, you know, when it's four years and above, 
then I'm really into them because I love the fact that you can then teach them and develop and they talk back to you like a little human and you can actually become really good friends with them, like best friends with them. But for an actual baby, babies make me run away and cringe. But if it was a, like, you know, 10 year old child, actually, I, I like that age. If, if we could just have a kid but bypass the baby years and just have them becoming like a young girl, that would be great. Um, but yeah, I know that it doesn't work like that. Um, and you know, I like that you can talk to them and teach them without the crying and the nappy changing and the whatnot. Um, and yeah, at least I suppose that's positive that I always, people always seem to pick me out as being quite a, um, a, a kind of someone that they want to be around. So either that's me just putting on really amazing acting skills without really knowing. And I think that's probably is my inner personality. I think I'm probably just a miserable bitch when I'm at home, <laughs> on my own. Um, uh, but when I see people, I think most people do that. If you notice, when someone has, whether it's mental health problems or whatnot, they kind of lighten up when they see someone. But the key with that is that you should watch them when they're on their own and when they think they're on their own. That's how you know how someone is truly feeling. Um, because if they look sad and isolated when they're on their own, you know that that's how they're actually feeling but if they then kind of like lighten up when they're around you um then yeah that's like the inner person screaming to get out <laughs> my psychology uh, analysis of that right i'm going to stop there um i know this has all been quite the last few blogs have been quite bitsy but it's quite kind of hard for me to encapsulate just like one topic or whatnot when there's like so much going on at the moment Especially with the herbs, I really want to keep you like up to date with how that's going. Um, and yeah, and the reflexology, definitely consider that. It's awesome. Um, well, I say it's awesome. I shouldn't say that actually, because I've only had one session. But the fact that it made me sleep well for three nights was amazing. That's proper magic right there. Um, and yeah, let's um, see how this all goes. Jeez.